Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, I'm really with it. I'm like Tigger, aren't I, again, yeah. And yes, it's early hours of the morning again, and yeah, as you can see. Um, <laughs> I got no shame, have I? I just really don't care what I look like or... Uh, best way to be. Um, why I'm looking at the piece of paper is remembering what this video is about. As I said in the previous video, um, we're covering things that cause stress. Now, obviously, if you've been, if you are subscribed, subscribed to my channel, thank you very much. And if you have been following this series, Road to Recovery, uh, I started it because. For people who haven't tuned in before, I'll say this at the beginning of every video. Um, I suffer from a hemiplegic migraine and it's a very rare sort of um, form of migraine. And yes, it's incurable and yes, it's rubbish and all the rest of it. And yeah, and like I said in my video yesterday yeah my bloods are all over the place and i got a few interesting months to come but do we care i'm still spreading the love and happiness okay so people who are tuning in just because it says um coping with stress and today we're talking about jobs yeah yesterday uh yesterday or oh, the last video was about money and that was big enough but this one about jobs is just as big and in some respects a lot more difficult to get out of. With money you can, there are ways to take control. With jobs, very very difficult. So, um, let me just put my glasses on. There's a lot about jobs and when I did the video about co things that cause you stress, as I said before, I had a number of um, emails and comments and recurring themes and jobs was the second one. And there are people who love the job and there are people who really don't like the job at all. But the people who love their job, they're working with horrible people. And then the people who just really, really don't like the job, just can't seem to get out of it. So, if we look, it, there's going to be a few scenarios through this. And also, uh, things that really do happen in the workplace and that are very difficult to cope with. So if we start with the workplace and you love your job, you love going in. This, this is what you went to college for or whatever, you, you know, you studied and this is it. You live in the dream, as they say. You're on the crest of a wave until you realise the people you're working with or it might just come down to one person and that person is a very toxic not very nice person and that just that one bad apple just ruins everybody everybody's day in the office they say one thing they say another and these people they've got psychological issues because Okay, some people are born nasty. It's as simple as that. But then other people have just grown to be that way because of circumstances throughout their life. And they like to take it out on other people with um, just so certain things that they say, certain things that they do. Um, you, might set, you might have to send your spreadsheet or your work to them. So as part of the process of, uh, say you're working in an office and then they send it back and they've changed all the font, um, the size of it, uh, they've changed it from, 
I, I can't remember, Trinity, Rome's, whatever, uh, font style, and they've changed it to italics. Just to annoy you. <sighs> and then you've got to spend all that time putting it back to what it was. If it was me, I'd just go to the floor manager and i say, look, um, I know uh, a bit new here, or you know, might have been there for a while. Can I just check one thing with you? Um, you know when we do our work, uh, what font size and font style should it be in textile? And um, is there a standard? Because there should be a standard uh, in all these offices. And then once they um, say yes, there is this in place and there is that in place, just fizz me. I just say, well, that mm, over there is really annoying people and purposely changing it back to whether it's just a joke or, you know, what they work in. I don't, you know, who knows? But they're being a pain. And they're making everything awkward and creating stress and just say can you have a word or if you don't want them to have a word put out an email to every employee so that every employee has it in black and white so if it occurs again right just say look this is you know i've sent this two three four times this week and look what's happened it could be sorted out that way but that toxic person is still working with you. And um, with toxic people, it's very difficult to get away. They're very def difficult to get away from. And it's how you handle that situation. If you have got to interact with them, you're going to have to be a bit wily um, how you handle them. Uh, if you let it get on top of you, then, uh, yeah, you are going to get stressed. But um, <laughs> I'm the sort of person that slowly, slowly catches a monkey and I just sort of uh, take the comments and they might be really sort of nasty, you see. I just have to say, I, I just have to, have to say, oh... You all right today? You seem a little bit wound up. Everything all right? And then, uh, as they try and butt in, say, I say something, and then I just keep on and on and on and on in a nice jovial manner. And I know exactly what I'm doing, that I'm winding them up, and they get really, really annoyed. And then every time that they see me, I say, you all right? How are you doing? And then, of course, they try and be toxic and then I start just talking over them and I don't listen to a word they say and I just go on and on about anything and everything and then you know make fun of them in a, a very roundabout way because they're so infuriated they can't <laughs> they don't understand what I'm doing or what I'm saying and if they do then they get even more angry and in the end they just give up. It's as simple as that. Something happened with um, me and I had to phone the local county council and it was their fault. So what I did, <laughs> slowly, slowly catch a monkey. Remember that phrase? Uh, I started phoning every single I phoned the council and then they, they you get put through to a switchboard and you say, oh, can you put me through to, um, I don't know, the highways department? Can you put me through to building? Can you put me through to this? It had nothing to do with what I was phoning about, but it was their fault and they wouldn't take responsibility, wouldn't answer emails, wouldn't answer letters, nothing. So I started on the hour and I phoned, got through to every single department. And then once I got through to every single department, I started again. And then I started again and again and again. And I phoned the CEO, Chief Executive Officer's of office. Not just once, but once I got to the end of the list, <laughs> you can see where this is going, can't you? But 
Well, the CEO must have had so many phone calls from all these different departments. Cut a long story short, at the end of the day, I had a phone call. Dear, uh, uh, yeah, the phone call was, um, am I speaking to, yeah, Matt? So, yeah, um, just, to, uh, just wanted to let you know that everything is sorted and it will be sorted within the next day or so. And blah, 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 very apologetic and all this sort of thing. And then they said, can you please refrain from phoning the count? offices any further so I was banned from phoning the council offices how good is that see slowly slowly catch a monkey so you don't lose your rag you don't get wound up you just play it cool and calm exactly with a toxic person you just keep on yeah if they come near you all the time you just think quick witty you just grab your mind ticking over and just slowly, slowly just annoy them. And what will happen is that they won't bother coming near you. And if all this typing nonsense and all that carries on, well, like I said, go to the manager and sort it out that way. But toxic people are very difficult to deal with. But I've got my own ways and means. And basically, as I've just given you an example, not only we're talking to them and annoying them, um, and I'm not, I can't be horrible. It's just not of my nature. I'm just, I just see it as a laugh that um, I'm winding them up and they don't realise and then they get more and more angry and in the end they stomp off. But it's this, and with the council, I got banned from phoning the council. <laughs> that was funny, but they took um, responsibility and the problem was fixed. So you can see sometimes you just got to think out the box. Don't let them get to you. You get to them, maybe. And it's just an idea, just an opinion. But you can see two good examples maybe there of perhaps coping with um, toxic people. And if they carry on, you carry on. And... Yeah, in the end, they will. And then if you have uh, some other friends in the office, just tell them what to do. And in the end, this toxic person will go very, very quiet or just leave their job. Because then, all of a sudden, all these people who have been stressed by this one particular person, and this person is ruining everybody's day, everybody's lives... Um, you go home thinking about it. Why should you? Just because of one person. Well, spread the word. And hey ho, who's the one that's in the minority now? And yeah, getting um. Well, you're all having a bit of a snigger then. And when you go into work, you say, "What are we going to do today?" So, yeah. Mentally, change your, um the way that you think. Like, okay. I'm not very well. I just say, I'm having a bad day. Oh, well, it'll be better tomorrow. And, you know, that's all it is. And it's like, oh, well, I've got something incurable. Well, I'll do the best, you know, just uh, cope with it. And nothing's going to stop me and blah, blah, blah. And, okay, perhaps uh, you have an accident. Perhaps you've lost... Um, I know this is very serious and it's happened to people. And... I, I'm not, uh, what's the word, um, undervaluing what I'm saying here. I can't think of the correct word, but hopefully you'll get the meaning, the gist. Somebody loses their arm in an accident and they go into the depths of depression. I say, what's the matter, buddy? I say, well, my life's over. I lost my arm. I say, well, no, you've still got your other arm. What can you do with your other arm? You've got your two legs, you've still got your brain, everything's functioning. Yes, you've lost part of your arm or maybe whole whole arm, but you are still that person. You can still achieve things. Things that, if you put your mind to it, have a positive attitude, you can do. You're not worthless. You're not on the scrap heap. Change your way of thinking. Exactly like with these toxic people and these scenarios. That's uh, come up. Oh, and the other one. 
don't you love people who've got, um, I call it, PAC syndrome, P-A-C, power and control. Now, you tend to find these people in societies, committees, things like that. And again, with all these sort of things, there's a psychological reason. Perhaps they were or considered themselves nothing, you know, when they were in school. Uh, they weren't involved in anything. They were never asked to join anything. And they, they've always wanted to achieve something or be someone, um, which is OK. But there is a, a a balance but they've gone beyond that balance and now it's like they walk around with a, a clipboard in society or the committee and there's an annual fair right you uh you're going to be in charge of blah 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 and you, you just about say uh, uh well actually no i can't because um you know you got some serious problems to look after. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, because they got the pack syndrome, you're doing that. And they go right the way around the room and you're doing that, you're doing that. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. Um, great meeting, uh, guys. Um, and they've got to have a briefcase as well of some sort. And then they put all their stuff in their briefcase because they want to appear really, really, oh, important. Thanks, guys. Thanks for a wonderful meeting. And then they walk out. See, it's the same time next week. Thanks. And you're all left sitting there thinking, oh, God, who put him in control or who put her in control? And the answer is the actual person who's got pack syndrome put themselves in that form of authority, so-called authority. Well, people with pack syndrome, yeah easy to deal with just say nah and they, they've just got this thing that they keep on and on and on that they think that whatever they say goes and that everybody is going to agree with them what um tough i don't agree with you and i'm not going to do it simple as that and why should you be uh trodden over why should you take this thing why should you be uh, felt to be beholden to this person to do what they say. You, it's the same in work. Bullies. Very, very common being bullied in work. And this is what pack syndrome people have. They bully you into doing something you don't want to do. And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. In work is different. Bullying is a terrible thing in work. And also, while I'm on about bullies, I will also uh, talk about sexual harassment, which is um, extremely bad um, in a lot of workplaces. And this isn't just males going after females. It's females going after males as well. It works both ways nowadays. And say you're at the photocopier and they walk past you. Say it's a male and you're a female and you're photocopying something. And they come up very close and as they walk past you, the hand goes over a certain part of your anatomy as they walk past. And they think it's funny. They get a kick out of it. And they've just taken a shine into you. It's not funny and it's not it shouldn't be done in this day and age and it's the same with women same scenario walk past you yeah touch a certain part of your anatomy and they think it's funny and then they uh the worst sort is um bullying and especially sexual harassment that is very difficult and what if the person sexually harassing you is a lesbian or gay. If you try and ex um, escape that sexual harassment and you're a female, you could go to the toilet and the, fe the male isn't allowed in there. And the same with the male getting away from the female. But th if they're lesbian or gay, then they're allowed in that toilet and you're cornered. How do you get out of that? And the same with bullying. They've got their ways of bullying you. 
and you know exactly what's going on. Now, this is a very, very difficult subject to prove. Now, n nowadays, we've all got our mobile phones. We could all put um, the video on or um, to record what's going on. And also, you could put um, a voice recorder on. There's also things you can buy off the internet. Private investigators buy them. And there's little cameras that go in your buttonhole. Um, or somewhere, say you're a, a lady. A buttonhole for a gentleman on a suit. Okay, fair enough. There's all different suits that ladies can wear. But you can hide it, say, in just... Um, a little flower or something like that that is made of plastic and just have the little camera in there and when the person approaches you click on record and also you have your mobile phone um, if hands wander and for gentlemen as well buttonhole you've got everything being recorded what's in that sort of eye level or whatever area that camera does but you've also got your mobile phone in case hands um, do go awry and touch you in places that uh, you don't want to be touched and shouldn't be touched. And this is where the hard part comes. You've gathered all your information, as in um, you've recorded everything that's happened, being touched up, how you talk to, how you're bullied as well. Now before you go any further obviously get two or three copies of that and the problem that I can foresee is before you do anything and approach any manager above this manager or this person seek legal advice. That's the first thing that you got to do because Certain institutions are so cliquey and so shut, as in closed, they don't want that getting out. And if you took it to a manager above that manager, there might be this clique that's going on and they'll dismiss it and they'll say that you encourage them. So not only have you been the victim once, but you feel as if you're the victim twice. So that's why I say go and seek legal advice if this is going on. Sexual harassment, bullying, is, there's no need for it in this day and age. No need for it at all. Get all, you know, your recordings, everything, so that it, it's absolutely watertight what is going on. Any, any person can see, you know, exactly that that person is guilty and they should be sacked and goodness knows what. And, <coughs> excuse me, but if you don't seek legal advice first, you might be accused, because it's all cliquey in work and they all stick together, you might be um, accused of entrapment. As in, like I said, you brought it on, you encouraged them, this and that, blah, blah, blah. You might have another friend who can mobile phone a video of what was going on and then your life is even worse in that workplace because you are made to feel a victim twice as I said and there's no way out so that's why I say take legal advice first because it's different in every country and every company is different some can take it very seriously and they'll just whip them out of the office so you're sacked and they'll take appropriate action. Others will just brush it under the carpet and you will be the target then for, yeah, and your life will be hell. So be very canny, wily, and slowly, slowly catches a monkey, as I said, and seek legal, legal advice if that's the situation you're in. Because these people should not get away with it under any shape or form and it's absolutely disgusting behavior and what the reasoning is behind it goodness knows and um, 
all we care about is that it stops because it's just disgusting as far as I'm concerned and as far as the majority of people are concerned touching you rubbing themselves up against you is just filth so you know it is with bullying and sexual harassment get all your um, videos all your recordings everything get as much information together as possible so it is watertight and that then seek legal advice ideally free in britain it's the citizens advice bureau and they say you've got to go and see a solicitor about this and um, or they'll advise you right go and see the manager whatever they will direct you in the right um in the right way and also people living in other countries you might just have to seek legal advice i don't know what is available in your country so um just think about it but gather all the information first and once you've got it and it's irrefutable then you can approach after taking advice you can approach and well you know what way to approach certain people which way to go because you've had legal advice and they'll point you in the right direction so yeah it's, it's a lot to think about um, because people just think a job is a job it's not excuse me while I uh, put my trendy Harry Potter I can't see you know Harry Potter can't see a thing so blurred Harry Potter or Harold Lloyd glasses I love them I love them right um, so yeah the job that you love and unfortunately it's spoiled by toxic people people with pack syndrome um you're bullied you're sexually harassed but don't forget the stress um of a job and how about if we look before you even get to your job about the commuting and i know people who live in um britain who travel from west wales to london every day on the train that's quite a few hours oh four or five hours i wouldn't i i can't remember off the top of my head <coughs> excuse me and then people from the north travel down to london now if you live in britain you know that that um when you come from the north it's called the easterly northeast sort of uh train route it's the worst it is the worst train um service in britain and in well they should be ashamed of themselves there's, there's a lot of uh places um probably in india um and places like that that have got far better more punctual um train service than what that northeast line is it's horrendous uh give you a good example of uh, if you don't live in britain of what our trains are like oh lord <sighs> we were called great britain once when everything was made in britain well hopefully after covid they'll think again and get everything all our manufacturing back to britain and it's and we'll be great britain again because we make things properly not cheap from asia that falls apart in two minutes and you'll probably agree in countries like america canada australia new zealand europe we make things better they might cost more but we make them better our train system you're going to kill yourself laughing now sorry but the trains aren't running today because we've got the wrong type of snow on the rail line wrong type of snow and i kid you not this is a regular occurrence okay so then they have to put you on a bus and bus you to wherever it might be all the way to london it might be to somewhere that hasn't uh, the, the snow hasn't reached yet Another favourite of mine is <laughs> autumn time. Beautiful time of year. And it's like between summer and winter and all the leaves are changing colour and they're falling down and everything. 
sorry the train um, is delayed or the trains are not running today because we've got uh, leaves on the train line or we've got the wrong type of leaves on our train lines <sighs> just digest those two wrong type of snow wrong type of leaf or there's leaves on the train line I bet you're thinking if you're in America or anywhere else now what on earth? Yeah, that's what we've got to put up with in this country. And also, you think, you get on the train, but before you get on the train, you've got to get, get up, you've got to get the kids sorted, you've got to get them to childcare. That costs money. And then, by the time you've rushed around and done all that with the childcare and got all the kids sorted, and then you jump on the train, and then you've got to go all the way to work, and you just make, make the train. Ah, oh, wonderful, okay. But then you get to the next stop and uh, more people pile in and then on it goes because they don't put enough carriages on the trains in Britain because they haven't adjusted the platforms to be long enough to accommodate any more uh, carriages on that train than what they were originally built for which we can go back to the Victorian times you know for trains and oh god please get a grip get a grip so because you've only got this amount of carriages you are really really getting forced in forced in forced in and you are literally trying so you got a presentation and you you want to um have it off pat you really learned the night before done all your work but you're still yeah you know what did it go over the thing you you can't read it because you are you're all literally packed in like sardines it's terrible now think of all that, you get to the final destination in London and you finally get off the train. Think of all that stress that you've gone through just to get to London. And that's before you commute on the underground to where you wo uh, work. And then, of course, like I said before, you work and then you might have the toxic people and everything. And then, don't forget, you've got to do that commute all the way home again in reverse and what if it is snowing and it's the wrong type of snow what if it's the wrong type of leaves or there are leaves on the rail and all this sort of thing you've got to get on a bus to get uh, you all the way home and then who's going to pick up the kids and then you've got to put the kids to bed uh, feed them maybe and then put them to bed and then you go feed yourselves and as I'm talking and talking and talking your mind is just whirling 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 can you see where the stress just comes from just from commuting to your workplace let alone doing your job the other thing in work is targets you haven't reached your target and they love to you know some people love to bully and point the finger and all the rest of it oh do you really want to live in this sort of work um, place of work and this sort of way of living you're not living you're just getting up going to work coming home falling asleep and then on the weekend you're just too tired to do anything you get some food in that's it and if that's the you know i'm not being judgmental i'm i'm not judgmental towards anyone and i'm not criticizing anyone if that's the life that you want to live fine if it's not that's obviously why you're watching this video so We've reached a point in the video now that we, we've talked about jobs and we've talked about jobs that you love and we've talked about toxic people, people with the pack syndrome, uh, <laughs> bullying and sexual harassment, difficult one to deal with, targets, yeah. And we've also talked about commuting, the absolute, well, absurdity in my eyes. Because the amount you're paying on travel just to get to work and get home is phenomenal out of your wage. But what if we look at it another way? That's Say you're earning half a million um, pound in your job in London. And you've got to get up extremely early. You've got to drive into London. Park your car in the underground spot that you've got. And then you've got to, it's just full on all day. You don't know what time you're going to finish, what time you're going to get home. And you do that for five days a week. 
and you don't see your kids, you don't see your partner, your wife, um, husband, um, until the weekend. First of all, that that's no life. That's no life. And second of all, imagine how much you're paying for your house to live near London, to be able to drive into London, just to earn that hundred uh, five hundred thousand pound, and you and your wife or partner might both be earning very good money and you're both driving in and you've got this house you know near London and we all know that houses near London aren't cheap so you both earning that money you're paying a phenomenal amount on a mortgage and on all your utilities and everything and you don't see each other until well Saturday or Sunday is that any sort of um, not just life, but is that any sort of relationship uh, to be in that you you just work in to live, not yeah, or you live in to work. I can never get those two uh, in the right order. Basically, you're working your socks off and you haven't got a life. Now, how about and you're gonna freak out when I say this. Why don't we look at this in a different way? If you're earning that amount of money, you must be very good at your job. Very good. Highly qualified, all the rest of it. And to earn that amount of money, yes, highly skilled, you know, the company appreciates you, all the rest of it. But I think the old ones of us watching this video uh, will say, yeah, everything in your 20s is just like, it's an adventure, you know, when you're younger. Life is an adventure and you just go mad and, um, yeah, you just, whatever, party, all the rest of it. You think nothing of it, what you're doing. But as you get older, 30, then 35, it seems to go in five-year stages. 30, 35, 40, 45, whatever. And then each time those five years come round, you start to think, I'm bored of that. And then as you get older, you sort of like, I'm stuck in this job now for life. And you look back at all that you missed, your children growing up. Um, yeah, just total lack of, you think, I haven't lived. I've just worked. For what? You haven't enjoyed yourself. You haven't enjoyed life. As I said in a, the previous video, I think it was, health and happiness is what we should all be aiming for. Yes, we need money to live, whatever, Trevor, but um, not as much as people think. And your health might have suffered. You're not happy. You're unhappy now. So, really... Okay, you're earning a lot of money, but really, you're poor. You're poor. It's as simple as that. Poor, maybe not financially, but poor in the correct respect of being rich, as in happy, um, healthy, all these wonderful things, content, you know. Um, and if you have got a family, yeah, you know, the joys and... Or should I say the ups and downs of having uh, children here. Yeah. They give you lots of uh, pleasure, plenty of tears as well. So <laughs> we'll phrase it that way. But do you want to look back at your life with regrets? Um, I don't. But if we look at it, you're earning all that money. And perhaps your wife is as well. Well, have you thought about all the stress and everything and you might be say you're 35 now okay why don't you and your wife or your partner um and like in this day it doesn't matter whether you're uh in a civil partnership man man uh lady lady or whether you're just husband and wife i don't care we've all got two legs two arms we all eat and drink the same. There's, there's nothing different about us, okay? 
ah, sit down, have a chat, and just say to each other, are you stressed? And then work out, and if it is the job that is stressing you both out, why don't you take a life changing decision? Not overnight, but just talk and um, about what is stressing you out about the job, you know, between the two of you. You've both got obviously on the same wavelength now. Well, would it be an idea if you just thought to yourself, I don't want to live up in a city anymore. I want to go and live either out in the countryside or I want to live near the beach so that I can go surfing every day. I can go for all these wonderful walks with just the the um, the sea and the wind blowing and just, ah, oh, yeah, just nature. Nature is such a good healer. It's the best. There's nothing better than um, just getting away from everything and just being at one with nature. And just talk to yourselves and say, yeah, actually, I'd love to go and live in the countryside. Um, or why don't we go and live down the coast somewhere? Now, because you're that qualified and you're that good at your job, why don't you put things in place slowly, slowly? It might take you one year. What's one year of your life compared to the rest of your life? And then start putting out, doing your homework, see what companies are around, what areas you want to live and everything. Visit, you know, different places and everything. And then once you decide on a place that really you know and everybody knows, once they walk into a, a home or somewhere or um, an area that you haven't been before, it's got this really good feeling about it and you think this is home that this feels good or I I can really see myself living here in either this town or I can see myself like when you go and see a house and you buy a house it's got the vibes yeah I can see myself living here not a problem put a lot one year planning something like that and then take a massive life uh, changing decision visit the areas then look what uh, jobs are there and then after a year by the time you sold your house and you've got some savings and everything a house in London will probably buy a house outright down by the coast somewhere or you'll have a piddly little mortgage which will relieve a lot of stress as well but then you might not be earning the £500,000. You might have to take a dramatic um, pay cut down to, say, 100000 Wow. Whippy wow. Think what you have gained. And it's not just where you live and the, just the lack of stress from commuting. You can go to work by night. You could leave the house, say, quarter to nine, be in work by nine. And then be home at a reasonable time. And oh my gosh, who are these children running around? Oh Lord, I've got a family. Oh, I never knew. Where did they come from? Oh, good Lord. Yeah, and my wife. Well, 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 well. Or my partner. Um, keep it uh, equal. And you, you'll have more of a life. You're gaining so much there. And then you're just not rushing around and all. Yeah, you're de-stressed. But not only that, you might think, oh, I've taken £400,000 pay cut. Your house is probably paid off from what you sold in London, or as good as enough as paid off, if you make a wise decision. And you'll have a little mortgage, um, if any. And, excuse me, your outgoings, you will need to earn £500,000, because you were in London and paying all those massive bills in London. Your bills are heavily reduced now. So it doesn't matter. It works out that even though you're on a hundred thousand pound, it works out not only is your life richer and you are healthier and less stressed, but because your outgoings are less, you are richer than when you were earning five hundred thousand pound. 
does that make sense? I hope it does. And it is a life changing decision. And it, you know, sometimes it's like with a job. Say you hate your job, or you're working with a toxic, toxic person or something like that. And you just leave your job. But before you leave your job, obviously, put out your CV, go and see what other jobs are there. And then just once you've got the job, hand in your resignation and go and start that job. I'm not saying that there's not going to be toxic people where you work, but we want to be positive and hopefully there won't be toxic people. And hopefully you'll have a wonderful um, job that you that you know you love and you really enjoy going into work and everybody gets on and everybody has a bit of banter and everything, but the work gets done as well. And all these, yes, they're, they're life changing. And okay, like I said, some of them might not work out, but what if they do? Imagine your life, it'd be wonderful, so distressed, yeah, wonderful, so enriched. And for people who um, work in jobs that they don't like, um, perhaps you're at the other end of the scale that you're in a, a lower paid job and you haven't um, got the, a trade or qualifications and you just and so you can't sort of say right I'm gonna I've had enough of working for this building company I'm gonna work for them or whatever again just look for another job and just move on to another job. Uh, another way of doing it is working for um, well, an agency. Agency work is great because you just put in a place for two, three days and they, then they say, oh, I've got something else, you know, Thursday, Friday, and you put here, you put there. And so you're not settling anywhere. You're not making friends, and but you're earning the money and the money is coming in. So there are options if you don't like your job, um, rather than going into another job that you don't like. And also, I'll just, um, what I think a lot of people have noticed in this day and age, we aren't living in a society where you just train for one thing. That is putting all your eggs in one basket. We're living in a world where you've got to have a good couple of things to your bow, um, strings to your bow. And I'm lucky enough, yeah, I trained in whatever, Trevor. Um, I can fall back on one that isn't paying and yeah, while the other one is sort of thing. And maybe a seasonal, something is Christmas time and you, you, you're you arty crafty and you make all these ornaments and you sell loads of them. And then you've still got your day job, so that's a nice side hustle. But then, what is going to happen for the rest of the year? Maybe you can do arty crafty things for Easter. But then, what is going to happen in the summer? So, if you're able to have a couple of things that interest you, maybe graphic design. There's, there's lots on the internet. Um, Skillshare, um, I think, is one internet sites that uh, that you can learn quite a lot from. I'm I'm not really up on it, but I've heard it's very good and people are pleased with what they learn on there. And what if you learn graphic design? You could then go on I don't know, Fiverr or something like that and offer your services as a graphic designer and you don't have to do it for five pounds. You can put in £10, you, you put in the amount that you want to do a gig for, a side hustle. And then, um, you know, th there's all sorts of things. There's something called Club, is it called Clubhouse or something? People are using it like a podcast or something. I, I don't know the ins and outs, but they've got like, they want their face in a circle. And they want the back um, behind their face coloured as a background and then they want the circle the edge coloured and everything. You could charge five yeah, fiver for that, five dollars, yeah I'm not sure, five pound, I don't know. And then I believe that Fiver take uh twenty percent out, so you're down to four pound or four dollars. 
and you do a few of those a day, that's a, a few pound in the bank. And then with graphic design, anything is possible. Um, you know, you can go as big as you want. It depends how clever you are on a computer. And just do these side hustles as well as keeping your job. And so that when, say, the Fiverr side hustle goes down, your arty crafty comes up, you've still got your income of your main job. And then when the arty crafty stuff goes down, your Fiverr stuff will come up. And it's just learning new things and just things you're interested in. Don't just go for, oh, I could earn this amount of money if I do that. You, if you're doing something you don't like, you've got to, you spend most of your life in work. So you've got to enjoy your job, haven't you? But there's, don't just put all your eggs in one basket. I try and learn at least, at least one new thing a year. If just don't stop learning. Just keep learning things and then you might get into photography. You might um, get into, I don't know, goodness knows what. Like I said, graphic design. And there's so much then that you can do. And um, yeah, the list is endless. And you've got this extra money coming in. Um, so say you're on a low income and uh, you think, I need to earn a little bit more money. Go on Skillshare or something. I'm not being paid by Skillshare. It's just something, one of those websites that I've heard a lot about. And just pay your money and just, um, yeah, learn new things and things that interest you. And also, if you are on a low pay job, uh, things that not only interest you, but can lead to you making money as a side hustle. Obviously, if it gets big, then yeah, you've got to declare the money, pay your tax, national insurance and all that, so what? But you still got that extra money coming in. And um, you'll look forward to doing that when you get home and the hours will pass and then it's bedtime and then just, and then your mentality and work might change as well. That, oh, well, I'm in work for these amount of hours. Rather than clock watching, you're just sort of thinking, right, I'm going to do this at home. So you're in a more positive frame of mind. Because when you go home, you're going to be doing da -da 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 on the computer. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope the video isn't too long. As I said, all these videos about coping with stress are going to be long and there's nothing I can do about it because there's so much to cover and you wouldn't be yeah tuning in unless you were stressed about these particular subjects so uh, I hope just you know just flicking these ideas around hopefully you will think and you'll flick some ideas around yourself or with your husband partner wife yeah civil partner um, just sit down and just get off the roller coaster. And just, that's the same with all of these stress factors. Get off the roller coaster and just ha reassess your life and have a think. Think what's going on and just be happy. Uh, you've just got to be happy rather than just being on that treadmill. Yeah, a robot over and over and over again and not getting any enjoyment from life at all so um the next ones that we're going to cover oh we're going to cover relationships in the next one mm, that's quite a tricky one and again that is a big one um it's not just for girlfriend boyfriend or Girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend. Let's keep all this equal. Um, but also, if you move in together and if you're married, and th there's a lot involved. And you might think our oh, relationships, yeah, whatever. But there's an awful lot involved, and there's an awful lot that can upset the wheel, uh, upset the cart, shall I say? So, um, 
yeah, I hope you got something from this video, even though I've chatted on as usual. And just have a think. And your future is in your hands. And hopefully, just jigging these ideas around, you'll be able to step back now and start jigging some ideas around. Having a look at the computer. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Train up for something else as a side hustle. And just, yeah, enjoy life. And just try and make the right decision. And hopefully, whatever decision you come to, it'll be the best decision you've ever made. Okay, thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it. And um, I'll see you on the next one where we'll be covering relationships. So as always, please stay safe and well, wherever you are in the world. And thank you ever so much for tuning in. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.